do when you grow up? What are you going to be? What are you going to be? Okay. It wasn't, I wasn't too much older than you when I knew what God wanted me to be. Hopefully, you're going to find out what God wants you to do. Because that's the most important thing about your job. Doing what God wants you to do if He you. I read that the most hated job in the whole country is what do you think? The most hated job. When you say it's cleaning the bathroom. Especially the toilet.
Father, in the midst of all the bad news that's in the world today and the new normal that we deal with every day, we know that we are your church and we have the good news. But we have Jesus in our hearts and in our lives. We have your word. So we come asking that you continue to use us in seeking and helping to save those that are spiritually lost. Help us to be faithful with the power of prayer that we have as we pray for others and pray for ourselves. For we know of so many today who are standing in the need of our prayers. We have those within our families who need to know today that you are there with them. And we have church family members who need to know the same. Some are physically sick and in need of you as their great physician as the doctors and the medicine work with you in that healing process. We got the names of several this week within our church family for whom we have been faithfully praying. We have our list of family and friends of whom are spiritually lost. Some have never invited you into their life as Savior and Lord. Others have, but like the prodigal son, are today far away from being home with you. And again this week we heard from church and government leaders who are not leading according to the truth of your word. And as we have been told, we know that pride comes before the fall. We also know that your word says that you will build your church. And we today want to be a part of that. <clears throat> so we ask for your guidance and your leadership in all that we say and in all that we do. Father, we know that in spite of what's happening within your church and in the world, and even in our lives, that you are with us just as you promised you would be. We have so much to be thankful for. We're blessed just because we live in this country, because we have freedoms and an economy that so many in the world don't have. We are free to worship as we are this morning. We're free to voice our opinions and free to travel. The Bible hasn't been banned from the reading list and it hasn't been taken out of our homes and out of our stores. We're able to share our faith with anyone who is willing to listen. And while many living with this new normal uh, find that things are not the same, they still have their job to go to and a roof over their head and a place to call home. And in that home is electricity and food and water and all the necessities of life. We have family and friends who love us and watch over us and are there for us. And on top of the list of all of the blessings we have, we are thankful that we have our relationship with Jesus. He's our Savior. He's our Lord. He's the one who, who cares for us and loves us in spite of some of the things that we say and even in some of the things that we do. So as we ask almost every Sunday, we ask again today that you would continue to teach us how we should be praying. Teach us as we use the model that you gave so long ago when you said when you pray, pray like this. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, and thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory. Must believe that he exists 
and then rewards those who earnestly seek him. By faith Noah, when warned about things not yet seen, in holy fear build an ark to save his family. By his faith he condemned the world and became heir of the righteousness that is keeping with faith. This is the word of God today for the people of God. Thanks be to God. And may it become a lot in all of us today. There is good news today. In the midst of all the bad news of, that's going around here, we know that God has given us the name of Jesus. We have the Word of God. We have the armor of God to put on. We have the gifts of the Holy Spirit. And we have the power of prayer. And we're going to look at how some of those things work this morning. We're going to look at Noah's Ark Project. It ranks as history's largest and longest construction project. The ark that he built was a football field and a half long. So the next time you're watching uh, your game on TV or you're at the game, add another 50 yards to that field and you'll get the length of the ark. They say the internal volume could hold 569 railroad boxcars. And it could hold 125,000 animals the size of a sheep. It was huge. And the question that is asked is, who builds an ark in the desert? Who builds for 120 years on something they might never need? Who spends their entire life banking on something that has not yet happened? Besides, no, you and I do that as we look forward to heaven. Jewish tradition says that Noah didn't just build the ark. He planted the trees to build the ark. And when they were full grown, he cut them down, and cut them into planks, and he built the ark. That's what you call going all in on a project. And going all in for what God is asking you to do. Another builder that I read about who spent his life on one project was Kors Korsak Zorkowski. When he finished his project, this is what he said. When your life is over, the world will ask you only one question. Did you do what you were supposed to do? <clears throat> That's not just a good question. That is the question. Did you do what you were supposed to do? Are you doing what you are supposed to be doing for God? I've had some time to think about it, and I realized, you know, you can't answer that with words. You answer that with how you're spending your life. Noah did that. He built the ark because God told him to do that, and that's what he was supposed to do. It's the longest act of obedience that we have recorded in Scripture. It took him something like 43,800 days. I'm sure that, that as he was building, there were a number of thoughts that went through his mind. A, a number of thoughts go through our mind when God asks us to do something. Can you think of what you thought of when you were asked to teach a class or go on a mission trip, go into the ministry, share your faith with that person that God put in your path? Whatever your thoughts were and whatever Noah's thoughts were, hopefully, we all were obedient. If you read the scripture, you'll find it, that Noah was obedient to the details of the revelation for over 43,000 days. And I don't know about you, but I would like God to reveal the, the second step before I take the first one. But God doesn't work like that. Because he wants us to live by faith and not by sight. We have to be willing to take that first step and trust him for the next one. That's how it works. And again, it's called obedience. If we want to do something new in our life, we can't keep doing what we've always done. We have to push back the, the fear of the unknown and take that next step in faith. It's like the African in power. I read that it has the leaping ability to jump 10 feet high 
and 30 feet in length at one time. And if you put it in an enclosure that's only three feet high, it will not jump over it. And they say that it won't jump over it because it doesn't know where it's going to land. And we're the same way that often, often that, that way in our faith. We want to know where we're going to land. We want to know how this faith things work. We want to know that if I give God the first 10% of my income as a tithe, that the 90% will go as far as the 100% would have. I want to know that when I share my faith with a family member or a friend, that it's going to be well received. But we have to take the first step like Noah before we can take the step second. Before we can find favor in the eyes of God. And favor in the eyes of God is God doing for us what we can't do for ourselves. His favor opens the door of opportunity, turns opposition into support, and it will move us into the future on the path that we're supposed to be walking on. We should be praying for the favor of God in our life. And we should know that it only comes by being obedient. And that obedience starts as we are willing to surrender our life to the Lordship of Jesus. God wants to help you. And He wants to help me to do what He has called us to do. The question today is, do you know what God wants you to do today? We would say, well, I know that He wants me to walk by faith. I like the definition of faith that reads like this. The willingness to look foolish when you do what God is asking you to do. For Noah looked foolish building an ark in the desert. Sarah looked foolish making maternity clothes when she was 90. Moses looked foolish asking Pharaoh to let the slaves go free. David looked foolish facing Goliath. Peter looked foolish walking on water. The wise man looked foolish following the star. And Jesus looked foolish hanging on a cross. But the results speak for themselves. Noah stayed afloat when the flood came. Sarah gave birth to Isaac. Moses delivered the people out of Egypt. David defeated Goliath. Peter did walk on the water. The wise men found the Messiah. And Jesus rose from the dead. If we aren't willing to look foolish, then we are foolish. But that's why many people have not built an ark or killed a giant or walked on water or followed a star or even found a Messiah. There comes a time when we have to quit doing what we have always done and by faith trust God and take that next step of faith to do what He's asking us to do, to go where He's asking us to go. Doing what God is calling you to do, like it's called a Noah, will complicate your life. But it's going to complicate it in a good way. In this day, He may be telling you to change careers, or take time religiously every day to spend time with Him in prayer and study of the Bible. Trust Him that 90% of your income will go further if you give Him that first 10% time. Witness to that person that He's put in your path even though you don't know how they'll respond. Eliminate that habit that you know is detrimental to your faith and just wrong. By faith, trust Him. Doing any of those will complicate your life. But again, in a good way. Has God given you a vision of what He wants you to be doing? What do you need to do in order to go all in for God? You see, for no, it's not just getting to where God wants you to be. It's about who you become in the process. It's not about how quickly you get there. But are you willing to stay in for the long haul? And in the end, were you able to say with the Apostle Paul, as he said in 2 Timothy 4, <clears throat> I have fought the good faith. I, I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. Now there is in store for me the crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will award to me on that day. 
and not only to me, but also to all who have longed for his appearing. It's true. Who we are is defined by the path that we decide to walk on. But we are not helpless in choosing. As I said at the beginning, we have the name of Jesus. We have the word of God. We have the armor of God. We have the gifts of the Holy Spirit. And we have the power of prayer to help us make the choices that are right in order that we can do what we are supposed to do. And if you and I, like Noah, will go all in and day after day after day do what God is calling us to do, through any of those days, we will know. We will have that feeling, that assurance deep inside that God is there walking with us on the journey. And when we take that next step of faith, He's right there with us. And he will continue to guide us and to lead us. We pray with you. Father, once again, we thank you for your word. We thank you that you give us the willingness to look foolish when we are doing what you are calling us to do. Because we know that you will always be with us. You'll guide us. You'll lead us. And you'll continue to use us in helping not only to build our lives, but in helping to build your kingdom. So we thank you for that today. And we thank you for what you're going to do to us in the days to come.